After many months of waiting, Lorcana Gateway is finally hitting store shelves. Ravensburger designed this product to be the perfect way to introduce new people to the world of Lorcana. But what's inside the box? How sturdy is its contents? Is it a paper mat or a board? What are the standees like? We're going to answer all these questions and more when we crack it open and deep dive the contents to ultimately help you answer, is this a product for you and is it worth the money? Let's take a look. kind of gateway oh my gosh i'm so excited for this we've been waiting for this product forever yeah. it feels like we Since got to the see it. first uh lore cast in yeah Mar well in we March. knew it was around before then but that was the first time we've seen it yeah so i want to comment on the the box real quick so as aaron's pointing to right here look how um, cute they are yeah these are all uh <laughs> redesigns of these characters by artist nicholas cole uh the, mm -hmm. one of the first artists in lorcana the one who really set the tone um as we understand there's no cards of these in the box but right. they're just for the box art um, but you can see Stitch, Maleficent, there's Detective Mickey and Elsa. It's almost like he made them just like more kid friendly if Disney characters could be more kid friendly. Yeah. So it's all about box so. art because it's worth mentioning these are being stocked in Target in the board game aisle. They're not in the card game yeah. section. So it's really interesting because these are definitely meant to grab board game players and to look like a board game. This is brilliant. Has have other tcgs done something like this like I mean, did pokemon do something like this at all kind of i won't say that no other t it's hard to know every tcg but mm -hmm. pokemon does have like my first battles and packs and uh like this like arenas mm -hmm. but i still see them in the tcg section okay. so um look at robinsberger yeah. breaking into the board game area yeah well they're in there with villainous well, yeah. it helps it helps having another board game and plenty <laughs> yeah plenty of other but yeah it does so they know how to do board games because they've done villainous they've done princess bride gargoyle a bajillion space mountain jungle cruise so this is kind of as liam's cutting it open these are some of the things that we're going to see inside do we think that this like board is going to be a paper or is it going to be an actual I think, board? I think it's like a board. You think I so? I board. hope so. So yeah, one of the things... I, I was a little bummed with Ursula's um, return that it was like paper. Yeah. I, so so it's, I hope it's a board. I, I can't wait to see that, but I will start... The, if the box design or the box like structure mm -hmm. is a good sign because unlike previous products that you kind of like opened and destroyed, like this yeah. is definitely a solid board game like box. Meant to be like put on a shelf. Yeah, and used over and over again. So it's definitely mm -hmm. like a board game you know box I'm gonna Ooh, look at this rule book big fancy rule book first thing you see That's so the gorgeous. the boxing of this the packaging of this how it's you know laid out is, is pretty nice yeah so yeah okay. rules of the game oh we can flip through yeah I was about, so when you once you like start looking at the rules you can see like all the card art is the same yeah you know as the regular game so yeah but definitely how to play and there's no like exclusive cards in this right no, it's there are not. just okay yeah so anyway uh index on the back so this is definitely like, hey, the box opens up and right in your face, like, this is how you play the game. Oh, and then there's a guidebook. Yeah, so the guidebook <gasps> is designed to walk you through. Oh, yeah, okay, Scandies. These are nice. The guidebook is designed to walk you through how to play this particular set. So the other one's the game rules. This one is like how you navigate from the base deck in here to adding more cards to your deck mm. um, to eventually build a 60-card standard deck. And so you can see as you're flipping through, it's like, you know, play basically play the game with the mm -hmm. base decks and then... When you're done and you've unlocked certain goals, then you add, uh, here are the goals, then you add reward packs, they're called them, to mm -hmm. build the deck out. And okay. so you're adding more and more cards to your deck and you can see as you go um, how that kind of looks and works. Oh, and then, that's so cool. And here it looks like they recommend. And then you can mix and match. Yeah, they're like starter decks, mix and match. Sorry, I'm like so excited. I'm like, keep going, Liam. Sorry. I'm so excited. Deck tips. <laughs> so you're getting two different decks in here. Here are deck tips for mm. each one. Um, I'm so excited they did an Amber Amethyst deck in this for new players, especially like I think that this is such a new player friendly uh, ink combination. Um, it's like the ink combo I learned to play on. Um, yeah. I do think it's just so like user friendly. I think you're right. I mean, this is draw cards. This is flood the board. Yeah. So um, same, you know, these are slightly different, but. So anyway, these are guidebooks. So as each player has a deck, this gives you some tips on how to like actually play each one. I am so cool. excited about what I'm seeing right here. I was because it's like thick, nice cardboard for your tokens. Like when we opened Ursula, um, these are nice. Um, I just like I have always felt like there should be like a little bit more substantial than like this thin, yeah, cardboard and um it's true and so i'm like really really jazzed that the they, others like, are really invested in this. Here, pop, pop, talk more about that Hold okay on. oh my gosh and also 
my favorite part of a board game is like popping out the pieces. I this is like oh so satisfying. It's like those videos yeah. online that you can watch with people cutting cakes. It's amazing. All right, you don't okay. We're, okay sorry. Right, nope. They pop out easily. Too late. So this is this is the okay. So <laughs> this is what we're talking about. Um so here you have the standard uh get out of here. Oh sorry. <laughs> you have the standard <laughs> damage token um from you know any of the um you know other products so here's the this is from ursula's return yeah so this is what you were talking about right aaron yeah and then here i don't know if you can this translates on camera but you can see the difference in the structure here so mm -hmm. these are nice and heavy they're like more of what you would think of as a board game so flimsy i think uh, what i was meaning especially is this is like the quality sorry i'm reaching up to the top but um this was like the quality of the token in quest mm. and i was hoping when we got quest for the first time that we were going to kind of see this um and so i'm really excited that they decided to like invest in this like really nice quality stuff for yeah i agree i agree completely this. so so here i think there's glare up there so here you can see the standees um gosh i feel like we should have more standees um no i mean it is oh i guess this is oh sorry they're double-sided oh yeah okay they're double-sided never mind so, so you can pick cool. out the so it's like the two characters that are in the deck and here mm -hmm. um i might as well break these out next because um you know we're talking about them standies. um these are nice and these are substantial too these these are um these are nice plastic mm -hmm. um so they stand up here you can't see them that well, but you can see how they lay down. But they're these are nice products. Also, I, I will note the frame breaks here. I love how the creative team does that. It seems like a oh, simple yeah. thing. Oh my goodness, yeah, Mickey's like he's almost like reaching around the edge. I love that. Yeah, I'm gonna look at the game board in a second so we can get everything else out of here. I think, but okay. um, here are the base decks. Base decks. Now you can see they say "Do not shuffle" on here, and I'm guessing. You know, I'm gonna double check, but I surmise. That's because uh, the guidebook is designed to, or the decks are designed to make your first few turns in your first game like easy. Mm. So this deck, for example, it says do not shuffle. Let's see what the top card says. This is a cool little clicker card. So let's, um, you know, a top hand off of this deck would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, let's take a look. So it would be a one drop. There's Merlin Rabbit, a two drop, a one drop, Daisy Duck, Winnie the Pooh. So yeah. So, I mean, mm. it's a... Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's a hand. It's interesting that they have you draw an unequal bowl in your first hand. I mean, they if they're teaching you how to play, they probably want to show you... They probably want you to see the difference One, two, in your opening three, hand. Four, five, so, you know. Six, seven, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, that's that. Um, there we go. And then you draw two drop. And then you hit... So, it's interesting oh, here. this is nice. Um, depending on if you're a player in the draw, as I look through this deck, you're going to hit the Malef Maleficent here on turn three, um, enabling you to use it like that turn you get it. Um, so, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. What did you your opening hand? Board? Oh. Yeah. It seemed like a pretty nice curve. Yeah. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry, I'm trying not to get it all shuffled. But I feel like it was I feel like it's a pretty yeah. pretty decent little curve so there. It's giving you so it's also giving you one uninkable here and it's giving mm -hmm. you the Mickey Mouse, which you want to play you want to play to understand blue. Yeah. So I'm not surprised. Plus you get one action and you also had one action in the other deck. So yeah, these are definitely designed um to kind of to really start introduction introducing you i wonder yeah. if there's i'm gonna are there any um locations no in the starting no oh not in the start i don't know if later on yeah okay but what what interesting. is interesting one thing i will note too um did this came out like with this set because you do see set four cards here mm -hmm. um so this is incorporating cards all the way from the first set all the way to set four um and actually yeah 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 so Super goof. It's an interesting card to include in the base deck. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. There we go. Let's put that there. And so here you have your reward packs. Um, one, two, three, four. And what's interesting is um, it looks like they're designed to upgrade both decks simultaneously. Hmm. Um, I'd have to check the guidebook. This pack is locked. Yeah. Do not open this pack. Are we going to So open to unlock a gate, um, I don't Are we, we going to let people be surprised? Yeah, so here, um, if you check up all the goals to continue, blah, 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 um, check up the goals, open reward pack one, um, look at the color behind the card names and separate the cards into their decks. So one pack upgrades, upgrades both, both decks. decks. Yeah. yeah, so you're upgrading both players' play experience and upgrading the power level of those decks as you go. Um, packaging, uh, this is fine. It does the job. 
Yeah, I feel like actually that's pretty nice for a board game like divider. Straight I mean, out of the box. It's it's okay. It I will say I think you're right. Like it's nice um in terms of functionality. Mm -hmm. Um it's a little flimsy, but it does the job. I mean, mm -hmm. you're really not taking this thing out. This is not designed to be taken out. And it's nice that they give you pockets here because there mm -hmm. are there are scenarios where all they give you like other board games is just a box yeah and you just drop all the contents in and your cards um, go everywhere and your cards go everywhere yeah so let's move this but that's not too bad all right i'm gonna look at the game board yeah i'm um, loving the quality of that too yeah let's slide all these so Do you wanna... we'll slide these out of the way these are these are generally the components other than the two books we showed you earlier so we'll get rid of these we'll get rid of the reward packs we'll get rid of the there we go. And ooh, ooh ah, we're we're getting to okay. see it off camera first. Well, yeah. you got to put it down so people I can know. see it. I know. I know. Whoa, we're ooing and eyeing at the Gosh. back. Actually, so <laughs> this is pretty. The, this is the back side of the board. That's Look at this. Okay, gorgeous. They totally did not have to do that. Right. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. Like I, I'm got to look in the book and see if there's a reason that this side of the board exists. But I'm guessing mm. no. And this is just like is it like maybe a makeshift play mat? Like once you kind of like learn oh. how to play the game, then you can like flip it, and this can be your like makeshift play, quote unquote play mat. Yeah, maybe. I'm like making air quotes as if people can. Trying see to, that I'm trying to move this quotes. around so people can get a feel for the whole thing. So but pretty. yeah, it's the backside I, again. It's it's cool. I'm knocking the camera around. <laughs> All right, um, I can't get this. is bigger than the than the play mat that we're used to filming on. Um, so let's show you two two different halves. So basically, what this is designed to do is oh, let me flip it. Ah, you can look at this. This is great. All right, this will work. So um, what this is designed to do is to be a um, play, mat. play mat yeah yeah so both players you know one player on each side whoop let's go up here so you can see this one player on each side here's your zones um it gives you a little explanation here mm -hmm. of your turn ready set draw ink act um gives you everything you can do symbols I don't like that the deck and the discards on the left don't like it. oh i always have my deck on my right oh you're and is that because you're left-handed oh maybe yeah it's an interesting preference thing south pause in uh watching this video let us know if you put your deck on the left or the right i'm interested i'm kind of curious now <laughs> um but anyway yeah so uh deck on the left right and then you have a lore tracker here in the center um so i'm guessing that the standees oh the standees probably you're using to track your lore yeah so, yeah um interesting okay so instead of having the this is so cool okay so instead of having the lore tracker um, as usual, so these will sit, and from the top down, you can probably see that the notches there probably sit on the oh, number. Look at so that. if they're in the same number, they go like this, and the notches point to which number you're on. So you can track that. Okay, cool. Um, this is a serious upgrade from the other lore trackers that have been in previous sets, which are little cardboard things. Yeah, 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 with like a little hole in the middle. It's like a little lore symbol in the middle that you like move along the paper. Mm hmm. Play that. So again, it's what they're doing here is they're they're evoking a board game, mm -hmm. right? With a TCG. So if you are a board game player who's never played a collectible card game, um, this feels familiar to you, right? And right, I mean, is that? Oh yeah, for sure. I'm sitting here thinking like we're gonna go see my dad, who we taught how to play Lorcana kind of last Thanksgiving. But I'm like, we have to bring this because I think he would be much more open. To learning the game because there's a board yeah involved no I, I think that's right i think that's a it's a fascinating idea Ugh. because yeah i for me i think psychologically you know what is this both decks oh there's both decks in the top card oh there it is so for me psychologically i think there's a um you know there's a difference between yeah, having a board like this and not having a board. So, yeah, you're basically tricking people into a TCG, and then you, you upgrade the decks, and then you get to the end, and you're like, oh, by the way, yeah, you can go buy other shiny cards and add them to your deck. I will say, I do also like, okay, a couple things. I think yep. it would be really cool if they would have included, like, maybe one or two booster back packs in mm. this so that you can kind of get the experience. I agree. Of opening it. like Opening a pack, decks. yeah. I, so this is a, actually a great point. I agree. And I think the reason they didn't is to keep the price point down. Mm. Do you know what the price point is on this? No. Um, and I only, I, we knew it was, this was circulated before, but it wasn't confirmed until I actually bought this at Target yesterday. Um, $24.99. Okay, um, that's not, in, in, in the world of a board game too, that is really not that bad. Right. 
And so, yeah, you're getting a bunch of cards. Now, there's no valuable cards in here, really. Uh, there is a Madame M. Fox, which is um, like a $5 card right now, I think. Um, so there is that. Um, so there's some value to the cards. But I think if they added a booster pack, they probably would have had to up the price of the box. And now for an intro product, you're sitting at about $30. So right. um, that's probably the decision not to put a booster pack in was, was that. Um, but at $24.99, it's a really great... It's a really great product. Like these, I, I can't. I can't yeah, say I think about it, this product. I think actually. at twenty four, like at twenty four ninety nine, you know, I always think about Ooh. when we would do like board game nights, um, and we would go buy a new board game to do a board game night. I'd be like, okay, is this more or less than the cost of us going to see a movie? Yeah. And if it was less, I was like, okay, this is a pretty great, you know, steal. Um, and so at twenty four ninety nine, like for two people, that is nowadays I think less than the cost of a movie. I don't know, maybe right about the cost of a movie. Um, but yeah, I will also say one thing I love is like these little like tips and tricks around the board. Um, yeah. You know, so I love it. I agree. I love so, it. This is so brilliant. I'm so excited. It, it's I'm just, so excited. Honestly, it's the uh, Robinsberger calls this the perfect way to teach somebody how to play Lorcana. It's, it's a catered experience for first time players. And it's just done so well in terms of quality. Mm -hmm. and in terms of how they walk new players through the game um, and even just the aesthetics of the box. Um, I think this product's brilliant. I think it's brilliant this is in the board game section. Yeah. And um, I don't know, Aaron, what are your final thoughts? I mean, yeah, ditto. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited to play this myself and to get the experience that they're trying to have new players um, have. And then I'm, I am so excited to take this to our family dinners that we have with my parents and my brothers and like actually have an opportunity to teach folks how to play in this new way rather than trying to like teach them how to play with a starter deck. Um, I think this is going to be really exciting. Yeah. High five. Yeah. All right. Hey, like and subscribe. This is fun. We, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. See you later. Sign off catchphrase.